Hi and welcome back. This is the first in a two-part series giving you some useful hints and tips on freehanding. Part one is all about dogs. I share with you some of my tips in getting angles correct, sizing correct and also how it's really really important even if you don't freehand to keep checking those sizes and angles. Okay, so I just want to share with you a few quick tips on um, freehanding your um, outlines if you want to, you know, if you don't feel you want to trace or anything like that. Um, now, tracing is, I know it's quite a controversial subject. For me, it's a means of really speeding up a piece and it also means that I can create tutorials for people and it's much easier for everybody then to be able to um, work with the tutorial. Um, however, it is a really good idea to be able to freehand. It's a good skill to have, um, you know, and I think um, I think it's good to practice your freehanding skills, but also to kind of notice even if you have traced your outline, sometimes things can go a little bit wrong. Um, you can use the wrong line to fill in an eye or a nose or something like that. So I think your freehanding skills are going to really, really help anyway with um, you know, your coloured pencil work. So um, I've got a few different things on here. Um, let's bring these in as well. So I've got, I've just got some printouts of some examples, um, which I'm going to talk to you about angles and sizes and all of that type of thing. I've got my little wing dividers here, which are brilliant for just checking sizes of things. So sort of checking sizes of noses and um, against what you're drawing, which is a really good idea. I've got a ruler, um, just got my mechanical uh, pencil there. And then I've got these um, scale dividers. Um, these are, they're great if you want to do everything by hand and you want to scale up from a photograph or scale down from a photograph, um, you know, depending on what sort of size you've got these little lines along here, which are going to give you, um, you know, the, the enlargement, how, however large you want it to go. And basically if you were going to be scaling up, um, you know, the, the, the further down, the further down you go, this way it's a bit of a tricky one actually, it doesn't want to, um, there we go, so that way, further down that way you get, you're going to get something that's the same size, when you pull it back up this way, you're going to have it enlarged um, by a considerable amount, so uh, you know it's dependent on uh, what you want to do so you know you've got the size here of your actual size and then if you want to enlarge it to that sort of size you can really properly blow an image up personally I find it much much easier to use a printout that's the same size as what I'm going to be drawing um, and um, that's that's what I would normally do and then I can use the printout to double check on what it is that I'm doing now there are all sorts of different ways of transferring your drawing. There's the grid method. There's um, there's actually, I think it's on his YouTube, that, and so I'm not going to reproduce it. Um, I'll put a link in uh, onto the the um, the details in the description. But um, Jason Morgan does a really good video on transferring this over to here by measuring. So using a ruler and using something like the wing dividers. Um, really, really. I want to say easy, it's really time consuming. Um, you're basically just plotting points as you go along. So you're plotting where the head is, where the nose is, where the ear is, and then you're sort of drawing in the bits in between. So it's, it's very much like the grid method. Um, but there are a few things to take into account when you are drawing any sort of animal, whether you're freehanding or not. Um, and that is that there are certain angles on an animal that are always going to be the same so you can always check those off um, and it's always good to kind of check on sizes so um, if I was to take this dog for example and we were going to measure his nose across here and what I tend to do is I find the measurement of the nose is going to be very similar to something like that of an eye here or the measurement between the eye and the top of the head um, or even in between 
the two eyes. It's not always the same, but you can usually find something that is the same measurement. And that means that as you're drawing, you can always be checking against these different things. So if I was going to be drawing this dog's nose in, um, so if we started with the dog's nose, um, we're just going to, um, goodness knows how big it's going to be, but um, I tend to sort of like to freehand um, ske and sketch it rather than um, use a grid or anything like that is just my my preference really. I'm working flat here which I find particularly difficult um, but basically I'm going to get my dog nose in a little bit like this and I've got my nostril area there and what I would tend to do is um, create the outline as a sketch first and then transfer the cleaned up sketch onto my um, the, the actual paper that I'm going to use to create the portrait on. That's what I would do because it means that I can rub things out. I can, um, you know, really properly kind of get to grips with my outline and everything and I'm not having to I don't know anybody who can just go round a portrait and just draw it like that I I mean you've got to be some sort of genius I think to be able to do that so mine is more would be more of a sketch um, and it's just sort of like basic the basic outlines and then I would take the size of this nose here and when I come to kind of plot the rest of the... Oh, it's not bad, actually. <laughs> um, and then when I come to plot the rest of the eyes and everything like that, then I can kind of use that that um, the same size as that. Um, I, I, if I was going to be freehanding, I would tend to start with an eye and then I would move out and I wouldn't actually do an outline. Um, but I know, you know, many people do do outlines and, uh, you know, it's kind, of, it's kind of up to you as to what, what you want to be doing, really. But one of the things that's a really, really good idea when you are creating, um, even if you've traced your outline, anything like that, is to look at the angles. So look at your sizes, like I've just been talking to you about, but also look at the angles. So if we look at this, the dog's angles of the... Um, of his features so we've got the angle of the eyes here and that angle is the same as the angle as the top of the nose the nostrils the bottom of the nostrils the, the bottom of the nose and the mouth area so all of those angles are the same now if you find that the nose isn't the same it's usually because the dog is sniffing. So that's something you've got to be, in a photograph it looks great, but when you isolate a photograph and create a drawing from it, then it's gonna look a little bit strange. So really, really look at your angles, um, you know, and double check that your eye angle is the same as your nose angle. So when you're freehanding your drawing in, make sure that you're checking those angles and double checking them. Um, Again, you know, look at things like the ear. So the ear is basically a, um, a triangle. Um, we've got, it's almost like a, I don't know what degree that would be, but we've got sort of like a vertical line here. So the ear is almost vertical. And then it's almost in that sort of triangle shape. Like that. And then we can start to bring in some of these edgy bits the roundy areas and we've got a little bit of rounding there and then we come round again and add in these nice soft areas here we can come up and we've got this sort of frilly bit on the top there um, you know very very easily again you know getting your angles correct but very easily putting the ear in there you know, you don't need to worry about all of the bits and pieces inside because that will that will come as you start to fill the piece in. Um, and then obviously we've got the neck area that comes down here. Um, and then you can look on the ear, if you get the placement of the ear correct, you can then look at how the rest of the ear starts to fit, the, the head starts to fit in. You know, so where does this bit here start on your on the ear so it's kind of just below this sort of rounded area here so you can start to bring that jawline in um, 
you can start to bring some of those shadowy areas in um, and some of these wrinkly areas here as well. So always looking where it's like it's like your landmarks you're always looking for landmarks you're always looking for well if if this is here and on the reference photo it's you know there's something here that kind of joins it then that's quite an easy reference to kind of go right okay so this is where the head starts to or the jawline starts to um to attach onto the dog's neck here um so it's always looking for those easy examples of uh, where you can definitely put something in the right place and then of course when we got to the top here I'm not sure whether I'd start with the ear but it was sort of like it's an it's an easy um, shape to kind of bring in and we've got the top of the head and the top of the head's quite flat and um, having a look at the the length of the head so from here to here to here is the same as we need to find something that it's the same as. Okay, so it's it's the basically the same as um, the edge of the ear here to where it starts to to come round again. So that is the same as the head here. So I can just put a little mark in there. So I know that the this area of the head here start it ends up being here. And then it starts to come down and this is basically flat and then we've got let's take this nose out now because that's right in the middle <laughs> right in the middle of the dog's head um, and then we kind of come down and then we've almost got two areas where it comes down here and then we've got this extra bit here for the eye so kind of thinking thinking about how that's going to work so it's two sort of horizontal lines there and it's it's basically how you know you feel comfortable um creating your pieces basically you know some people might go well it's much easier to if I just put, draw a grid on there and I just join up the 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 dots and everything other people might go well do you know what I, you know it's much easier if I measure everything um for me I tend to do the majority of things by eye so I'm then going to bring this across here um I've got some stuff going on there my eye coming in there somewhere I'm going to come across and the eye area is going to be along here somewhere. And then I've got the eye. And that sort of a shape. Then we've got some bone structure coming along down here. Again, starting to bring that in. It's not to be a little bit deeper down there. And we can start to really, um, you know, build up a picture. And then once you've got something in, you can then start to really tweak it and work out which bit goes where, what do we need to change, do I need to rub a little bit out. Um, things are going to look a little bit weird if you haven't got them in in the right place, but also if you haven't got any context to go with it as well. So, you, you know, you've got to be really careful um, with making sure that you've got the context around it. Um, angles of cheekbones, um, jaw lines, that type of thing, make sure that they're all in correctly. Uh, you know, and it's it's just those little those little things that are just just really, really important when you're freehanding, just to make sure that you're getting your angles correct and your shapes correct. and measuring things against each other um, is a really good way of um, you know working out where everything goes and how everything sits okay so next we just look at I've got the dogs here again I haven't got a dog looking forwards but um, the easiest dog drawing to draw would be a dog in full profile because then we don't have to worry about the eyes so if you look at this one here we've got this on sort of like a three-quarter 
um, and we've, we're showing a little bit of eye. This one's not so bad because we've got quite a nice straight line here and we haven't got some weird angle. You get some pictures where there's like a really pronounced angle here on this other on the eye that's sort of around the corner a little bit and and it can look very very strange this one's not so bad because you've got like the, the full face and the cheek and everything coming in here um if we're looking at something on as a profile this is a much easier portrait to draw because you don't have to worry about the other eye on the other side and it's just all on a flat again you've got to be really careful that your eyes don't get too big so always be measuring the eye there are tend to be smaller than what you think they are so you know if you've got the keep measuring whether it's the eyeball that you measure um, and you might be able to measure that so you see the eyeball area here is the same height as the nostril um, and you probably think that the eye was an, an awful lot bigger than that but in this case it's the same height as the nostril so you've got something to relate it to um, the width of it so from corner to corner um, is going to be the same as the nose okay so again you've got something to relate it to so if you've put your nose in and you're thinking oh I'm not sure whether that's quite right or not make as long as it's the same width as the eye then you're okay if you put your eye in and it's kind of you know like we all do we end up with an eye that's kind of over here somewhere then you'll know when you measure it against the nose that it's the incorrect size and you need to reduce it um looking at the the angle of the the mouth just make sure that the, that, that angle is correct in relation to the rest of the dog's head um again one of the um one of the things that I see quite a lot is that we end up with a, a, um, a head that's too shallow or a head that's got a too steep an angle on it um, um, also that the the jowl area isn't correct or that this is on the is on a an incorrect angle as well uh, you know and and also one of the things that, that I see quite a bit is is bringing in a little bit more of a shape into the nose area here so just making sure that everything this is on a straight line this is on a straight line this is on a straight line um, you know, and it's it goes back to the kind of the basics, you know, when we the books that you can get where you kind of draw shapes for animals and stuff. And um, it, it's basically it's basically angles. You know, you, you get your angles in um, and then you can start to kind of curve those lines off and it, um, you know, makes it just that little bit easier. So the other thing to remember as well is with a dog like this where it's almost full face on, it's not the three quarter, um, this is a particularly difficult nose placement because the plane of the nose comes all the way down here and then it, it is kind of pointing downwards and a lot of the time we end up getting this lo lovely plane coming down and then when we've got the nose here it ends up looking like it's actually pointing straight at us. Um, and this is all going to be down to your placement of shading so making sure that your shading is correct so we've got the light source is coming down this way and it's hitting the top of the nose here and we've got uh, the the highlights are on the the bottom of the nostrils here where they're kind of sticking out a little bit so it's really really important to make sure that we've got these these highlighted bits in here in the correct place if you change the highlights it changes where the light source comes from and then it changes the shape of the nose so the tonal values are the most important thing to think about when you're drawing a nose like this to make sure that the nose is actually pointing in the correct um, direction. Um, again, the eyes and the nose, everything like that, they're all on the same angle. So you can check the angle of those as you're creating the piece. You can keep double checking that you've got the eyes and the nose in the same or on the same angle, which is really, really important. Um, and um, and again also the size of the eyes again um, one of the things that I really struggle with is the um, the area between the corner of the eye and usually on a dog you've got this sort of bit of you've got the on this one and on this one here between the edge of the eye and kind of where the hair changes direction and you get that sort of like little fan effect um, for some reason, I always end up with mine much shorter and that can have a real detrimental effect on the rest of the face as well. So just making sure that you've got your distance between 
the bridge of the nose here and the eye is correct. It's usually wider than you think it is. So again, really check the, uh, the sizing of that. If we look at the nose on this, unless you've got something that's um, considerably foreshortened um, with camera distortion then, um, but usually the nose is around about the same width as the area in between the eyes, um, sort of corner to corner. So that's something to sort of uh, remember as well, that you've got that, um, you know, the size of that is the, that you can kind of relate to. Um, and again, if we take the, this dog has got particularly big eyes. So if we take the size of that eye and we can make it work with something so that we make sure that the eyes are the correct proportion. If we look at this, the, the middle part of the nose, they're around the same size as well. And also, yeah, not quite. Sometimes the eye can be exactly the same width as it is height. So again, that's something to kind of think about. Hi everyone, thanks for watching this video and I really hope you found it useful and have learnt something new. If you have any questions or queries, please feel free to leave me a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you want to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button below and if you'd like to find more tutorials filmed in real time with loads of detail and full step-by-step -step instructions, you can join my Patreon for just £5 a month. You can find a link for this in the description below. Hope to see you again soon.